here with Nate Nookie Brown. Nate and I are going to try something new, maybe do a little bit of a, a podcast here once a week, and we're starting with an Olympic wrap-up. Nate, thanks for talking. Good to see you, Mike. Glad to hop on the channel with you. I barely recognize you with that beard. Is this what, uh, you know, I know you have a growing family. Is this so you can, plausible deniability? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I, we just had our, my wife and I just had our second a month and a half, or five weeks ago. So I'm growing a little beard for, for the new arrival, the new little boy. Gotcha. And this way you don't quite look the same. Yeah. You do have a little bit of a baby face. Yeah, yeah, keep him guessing. <laughs> That's it. So, Going to do a little uh, Olympic wrap-up here. Um, did you watch Wrestling Live, or are you watching a stream afterwards? A little bit of both. I got up for the, the morning stuff. I'm a, an old man at heart, so staying up to like 10, 30, 11 was, was a struggle. I was falling asleep on my couch. But then I would go back and rewatch. Um, watch pretty much most of the, the, the night sessions in Japan, which were 7.30 local for me, 6.30, 7.30 local. Gotcha. I, I think we'll mostly focus on men's freestyle. I think we both follow that the most. Um, although I have coached uh, women at that level. That's another story. Um, you know, walked away with five medals in with five guys in the in the of this, you know, five guys participating out of six weights. I don't think we've done anything like that since Atlanta, but there were 10 weight classes then. Yeah, on the broadcast, they said we haven't placed every weight class since, like, 1904. Um, and then if you look at the the overall medal count, we the United States was at nine. Uh, the ROC was at eight. I think it, it's really impressive, especially if you look at the past two cycles. Um, it, it really felt like we used to really scratch, scratch and claw just for a medal. And now, especially the men and the women, women did, you know, we're not going to dive as much into it, but I will say that, I had a lot of fun watching them, you know, from Sarah Hildebrand to Tamara Sock, they, Tamara Mensa Sock, they did a really good job, um, and I, I think from a women's perspective, Japan as well, just so incredibly impressive. I agree with you. Uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I, I coached uh, uh, one of the women from the team about a decade ago. Um, I will just say that the quality of the women's technique and I mean, I don't know if it's the training as well, but the product looks a lot better than it did maybe three when it was beginning. And that's to be expected. Um, and, you know, the Japanese and Americans clearly seem to be the cream of the crop, although I would say a lot of the Stan region looks like they're, uh, you know, um, making a move in women's wrestling as well. Yeah, hopefully it'll spur. I mean, I think women's wrestling is great for the sport. Uh, and, and it's where a lot of the growth is going to come from. So hopefully, you know, we'll see Pennsylvania here adopt it soon. And I know that, you know, wrestle, wrestle like a girl and that crew is, is driving really hard. So exciting stuff to watch. Interesting, since we're both Pennsylvania guys, you know, one of the last states to possibly adopt it because wrestle like a girl and, um, you know, I would say the, the energy behind the Chris Ayers, uh, you know. And Hossie, I mean, it's just, there's yeah. so much here. And you just, yeah. We'll yeah. get there, though. Yeah. Um, other than that, you know, uh, yeah, it was awesome to see all the guys place. It was awesome to, even though there are no uh, fans there, the the women's team, in particular, Adeline Grace, it was like maybe one of the biggest cheerleaders. It's awesome to see such a tight team. Um, you know, you know I will, I've joked and written about it in the past, you know, the Fox Catcher Club – kind of developed because USA Wrestling probably wasn't doing the best job supporting wrestlers. And right now it feels like they're in stride and working in a really unified fashion, which is great for American wrestling. And I feel like we're in a renaissance of, you know, Olympic style wrestling. Maybe Greco's going to catch up, but at the freestyle level, we're doing really well. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And I think that um, from the freestyle perspective, it's just such a fun team to watch. Uh, yeah. Super aggressive, scoring points. Uh, and, and we'll get into it as we go through the weight classes. It did feel like the uh, uh, you know one or two little things, and, and it could have been just crazy, right? And right. I think that probably leads right into 57 kilos with with uh, Thomas Gilman, who I thought is probably the best performance I've ever seen from from Gilman. I agree with you. It pains me to say that I was uh, you know when he wrestled that Russian in the opening round, Aguyev, um, you know. The, the takeaway for me on that match was 
All right, Gilman came to wrestle really, you know, the switch to the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. Something in his mind, I feel like, uh, solidified, hardened, became more driven. And, and the takeaway in the last 10 seconds when he loses that point is even when you're in a, that kind of lock, you got to keep moving, right? Yeah. Aguyev kept adjusting until he could get his foot to sweep that ankle, right, and come back. Yeah. Um, you can't just hold straight. You got you to keep moving even when you're just trying to kill time. Um, but the great thing was that didn't break his mindset, and he wrestled back. Yeah, I mean, he came back. The, he wrestled the Ooze back the next match uh, in the Revachage. Tech that guy 11-1, and that was another one where Uguaya beat him 6-6, I believe, on, on the top side. It was a very similar Uguaya. It was super crafty, found a way to win. I think that's... That was one of the takeaways that I had from watching. Um, I love watching the Russians wrestle. Uh, they're I mean, they're curving the crowd right now, and we're, we're getting continuously getting closer with them. But they, they that's the next thing that I, I hope to see from um, men's freestyle teams, a little bit more of that craftiness. I think. If you want to keep listening to the Olympic recap with me and Nookie, hop on over to the Rockfin channel. It's free.